Hey, it's Chuck on Bucks. Welcome in. Somebody told me in the comments the other day, you picked a great time to start a show about Ohio State football. And he wasn't lying. Because in the month that I've been doing my show about Ohio State football, it's been nothing but piece of good news after piece of good news. And we have got another piece of good news. And I think that this one is bigger than it's going to be made out to be because of the position that it is. But I think there's some more going on there. So I want to set this up. So I think it ties into what I've been saying since about a week after Nick Saban retired. So new Alabama coach Kalen DeBoer heads down to Alabama, right, from Washington. He brings with him a whole lot of folks. One of those people he brings with him is his director of player personnel, Courtney Morgan. Now, Courtney Morgan is the guy who helped him orchestrate recruiting at Washington. And as we know, the biggest bag on DeBoer in this hire, and the reason that they kind of preferred Dan Lanning or Sarkeesian, was can this guy recruit in the South? He's from, a, he's from a small state in South Dakota. He coached, you know, lower level ball for most of his career. He goes to Washington. Um, and uh, can he recruit down south? Can he, can he fit in down south? Let's stop pretending like Kalen DeBoer can't recruit down south. Because Kalen DeBoer can't recruit anywhere. He was horrible at Washington. Kalen DeBoer's classes at Washington ranked 59, 29, and 29. I know what you're thinking. That's Washington. Okay, it is. But they're no schlubs. They don't recruit like Alabama or Ohio State or Georgia. But the three previous coaches at Washington all smoked Kalen DeBoer when we're talking about recruiting rankings. Even Jimmy Lake, who was horrible. So Jimmy Lake, Chris Peterson, and Steve Sarkeesian, the three coaches before him, even Marcus Tuiasa Sopo, in an interim role, a guy who had never been a head coach a day in his life, all were better recruiters. I'm talking classes ranked like 15, 15, 16, 17, 18, 18, 23, 26. They all destroy Kalen DeBoer in recruiting at Washington. So we're saying this guy is a subpar recruiter based on his peers. We're talking the same school. So he's subpar. He obviously knows it. So wouldn't you think if that was something maybe you didn't excel at, that you would maybe want to, I don't know, think it's maybe a little more critical to keep some pieces in place at Alabama when you get there? Well, there was a guy in place when he got there. That guy was Sam Petito. Sam Petito has been the director of player personnel at Alabama for the last eight years. So I respect the loyalty and I respect rewarding the people that help you got where you got. That's cool. But not at the detriment of your program. Because, man, Courtney Morgan is coming to fill in for a guy that helped Nick Saban for the last eight years put together recruiting crown after recruiting crown after recruiting crown. A guy who's from Louisiana. San Petito is now a Buckeye. San Petito is now going to be working under Mark Pantone. And Kalen DeBoer is screwing this up big time. And the Alabama faithful are furious. And what have I been saying since, uh, I don't know, about a week after Saban retired? We started to see the momentum coming. Alabama has exited that poll position, and Ohio State is pulling up into that spot. And Ryan Day just keeps on saying, I'll take another one of your mistakes. Here, Give me another one of your mistakes. Come on, DeBoer, give me another one of your mistakes. Because the guy just keeps losing. He lost his wide receiver coach. They got four great recruiters on the staff under Saban in their assistant recruiting staff. Wide receiver coach, Holman something, Holman Thomas or Solomon, Holman Solomon. He goes to Texas A&M. Uh, Tavares Robinson goes over to Georgia. Two of their very best. Uh, he was their cornerbacks coach, Tavares Robinson. They kept Freddie Roach, their defensive line coach, who's fantastic. And they kept their running backs coach, their other ace recruiter he had to promote those two to make that happen but he made it happen so good on him for those but he's now lost the majority of their force in recruiting he's already not a very good recruiter to begin with he doesn't really seem to be a good fit down there i wasn't buying into that when they first said it right like he doesn't fit into the south blah blah, blah. i'm like come on man that stuff's overrated but and it is really starting to feel that way because he's not just kicked out i don't all right, he didn't kick him out. He's not just made a better effort to retain Nick Saban's stuff down there that was in place 
<laughs> that was champion stuff year after year after year. He's trying to do it his own way, which whatever, respectable, but I mean, dude, it's already set up there and these people want to stay. They know the culture. They love the culture. Um, they want to be around Alabama. They want to be on his staff and he's not making it happen. Instead, he's bringing in his guys from Washington, almost all of them, except for the one that mattered most, Ryan Grubb, his offensive coordinator, who's now gone to the Seahawks, the one that really mattered. And he's brought in a bunch of the players. This is a guy who let Julian Sane walk for his recruit that he had committed to him up at Washington, who is a good player, but he's not Julian Sane. He's also brought in a pile of transfers from Washington. So the guy's just messing up. He's messing up left and right. And Alabama, without Nick Saban or Bear Bryant, is not that kind of program. And they're not going to be that kind of program under Kalen DeBoer. And Ohio State gets Sam Petito. So let's talk about Sam Petito. So from a fan's perspective, like I said, the Alabama fans are not happy about this at all. Apparently this guy's pretty beloved. And Devin Sanchez, the number one cornerback in the country out of Houston, obviously a Buckeye commit, just so happens his parents are quite impressed with Sam Petito. They both tweeted about him this morning. And when we talk about the Sanchez family, we're talking about parents who get it. These are people who are very in tune to the recruiting process. They're very in tune to the high school football process down there in Texas. I mean, I, I just get the feeling that they've been involved with this. I don't know, maybe family, uh, teammates of Devin, but it seems like they are just really on top of things. They're actively helping recruit what I think is going to be a class that we see every once in a while where you get a big dog in early and Devin Sanchez is that guy in this class who takes pride in the class and really wants to see it be an excellent class and that momentum starts to build. And I think that the capability is there if they don't sign a 22-man class to win the recruiting crown. And I think that most of that is due to Devin Sanchez and his parents. So what did his parents say? Well, Mrs. D. Sanchez says this morning, you don't meet people like Sam Petito often. I teared up when I heard the news. My family is extremely excited to continue our relationship with him. And follow that up with, Petito is so genuine and caring of people. I'm so glad he will be at OSU. Now, you can't imagine this woman's had a ton of interaction with this guy. I mean, Sanchez committed to us pretty early. I don't know. Maybe they were, Alabama was in on him for a year. How many visits is that? I don't know. Not much, right? But the point is, that's the kind of impression this guy's leaving on parents. That is one heck of an endorsement to me. Mr. Sanchez tweeted the same thing. And this, these parents are, are like, seriously, put them on the payroll. Directors of Ohio State Recruiting Southwest. Let's just get them on the payroll. They are unbelievable. She is literally in the Bucknuts Morning 5 show commenting every day. I mean, this woman's awesome. So, anyway, Saban retires. Bama falling. Ohio State pulling into that spot. The talent's not spreading out like people thought it was. Ryan Day is building an absolute monster. He's building a monster in a team that will, win, will win national championships, plural. I really believe that. I've never felt so confident in the way an Ohio State staff is constructed in my life. It's just the facts. I hate being Mr. Sunshine Guy. I really do. I'm not really naturally like this, but I can't ignore what I'm seeing. And I just, they're, they're calling me delusional out on the Twitter, the Twitter streets, guys. They're call, they call all of us delusional. Do you know that they call Ohio State fans delusional? I find that offensive. I find that offensive. But anyway, that's the news update for today. Sam Petito working under Mark Pantone adds a whole nother element to Ohio State recruiting. A man who is in tune so much in that little pocket of the South from Louisiana, been down there all his life, eight years at Bama. I mean, the contacts he has, the in that this gets us in an area where Ohio State's been building crazy momentum. We talk about Naeem Offer being the first commit from Alabama since the 80s. I mean, things are happening that are just overwhelmingly exciting, and San Petito is another one. And that's our update for today. Thanks for tuning in. We'll talk to you soon. Chuck on Bucks out.